insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 46 greasing the lines at Disney. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my festive and vibrant (laughs) co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. I didn't even write that one down. I know. That that was like off the top of your head. I was impressed. That's pretty good because I can't make these up anymore (laughs) and I don't want to keep reusing them. Right, right. So anyway, as you can tell from our elaborately, uh, Decorated set here, thanks to uh, the child, uh, Madison, uh, our co-host. Oh, not Baby Yoda? Not Baby Yoda, no. But thanks to our co-host on Insights into Teens and yourself, Mm -hmm. we have a beautifully (laughs) festive set to work with today in the studio. Yes, we do. Um, Just before we get started, it is worth noting, and I'll mention again at the end of the show, that This is the last podcast that we'll be recording uh, before the holiday. Mm -hmm. We are taking a bit of a hiatus. We'll be back after the new year Mm -hmm. with uh, more podcasts. So enjoy this. And we have a special uh, presentation at the end of the podcast that all of the network's hosts have put together for our audience. Mm Mm-hmm. So today in Disney Detective uh, and today in the show itself, I think we got a fairly light show that we're going to have a little bit of fun with here. Mm -hmm. In Disney Detective, we have some news from Disney that they're doing away to a certain extent with queuing lines with a new system they're working with on the new Rise of the Resistance ride in Mm -hmm. Florida. Then uh, Bob Iger uh, arran- is arranging a meeting with uh, our favorite mafia, I mean, our favorite director, <laughs> Martin Scorsese, uh, to discuss his difference of opinion on Marvel movies. Uh, I'm not really sure what the point of the outcome of this is here, but I still don't like Bob Iger. <laughs> then we'll move on to our entertainment news, where we have kind of a, a, a nice story about Olivia Newton John, who mm-hmm. is a. Uh, in the news again, although I think the last time that I think I saw her in the news, it was uh, health issues that she right. was running and she's into. still having, but we'll so, talk about that. We'll talk about that as we get into it. And then, thankfully, The Expanse Season 4 has Aww. finally dropped. Um, strangely enough, we haven't watched any of it yet. I'm sure we'll <laughs> rectify that this weekend. Sometime this weekend, right. Um, and then we'll finish with our insightful picks of the week, and then we will lead everyone out into the holiday season with our special project. Uh, shall we get started, my dear? Let's do it. All righty. Go for Disney Detective. So, as most people know, the second ride in the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge uh, area of Hollywood Studios has now opened, and that's Rise of the Resistance. That was the the big ride that basically everybody was was waiting for. Um, the original plan was supposed to be that it was going to open first in California and then in Florida, but because of the way the timing went, they kept all of the engineers in Florida to basically finish that area. I still don't know that how area. Disney couldn't afford a second set of engineers. I don't engineers. know. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Um, but one of the things was, now, for anybody that's been to a Disney park, they ha- you, know, you, you know about the fast passes. So if you've never been to a Disney park, they basically offer this 
quote unquote reservation system. Um, and so many days out from your trip, either 60 days out if you're going to stay in the resort or 30 days out if you're uh, staying off property, you can go online and you can make these quote unquote reservations. And basically what it's doing is it gives you an hour time frame to get on to one of these rides. And the idea is that you're supposed to have a shorter wait time. Um, but if you don't get a fast pass for that ride, then you go on what they call their standby line. And depending on the ride, it could still have, you know, a five minute wait, or it could have a couple of hour wait. And, you know, as we've seen with Slinky Dog, um, and some of the, the other bigger rides, you know, people are basically standing in line all day, you know, it's four or five hours. Um, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Doesn't it? Um, but when Harry Potter over in Universal, when they opened up their newest ride just a couple of months ago, it actually had an 11 hour wait. Who waits that long? I don't know. People obviously were doing it because the wait was exactly that long. Well, Disney, I guess, decided to kind of change things up and they didn't announced this until basically the day that the ride opened. They weren't going to be doing any fast passes, but what they're doing is a virtual queue. So what happens is the day that you're visiting the park, your whole party has to have already been in the park. And what you do is you head over to Galaxy's Edge and Disney has an app called My Ex My Disney Experience, which will give you wait times. You can order um, food. You can, you know, get directions on how to, you know, get to wherever you need to go. And it keeps track of your other fast passes or dining reservations that you might have. Well, with oh, this is the same app that lets you skip the line at the quick serves too, isn't it? Right. The, okay. When you can order at the, the quick serves. Okay. Right. So same app. So now what happens is as soon as you check in and as soon as everybody that's in your party that's going to be going on the ride checks in, what you do is you go to the app and you check in and then you're assigned a boarding pass. Um, and what then what they'll do is they'll give you a grouping number. So if you go on the app, it'll say now boarding such and such groups. And then what happens is two out you get a two hour window to actually get onto the ride. And what'll happen is they'll also send you push notifications to let you know, hey, you know, it's about time to to get ready. So what's nice about it is, there's never you're never going to see a wait time for the ride because you're not going to know how long the wait is because basically the idea is that when it's your turn to to board you're going to go and you're going to go through the queue and you're going to you just walk right and in. you basically just walk right in maybe you might have like a 10 minute wait or depending on how many people um you know or waiting for the the group or you know because you know how, how it's gonna how it's gonna work but the nice thing is that you're free to go anywhere else, you know, within the park. So if you have other fast passes, you can go and do them if, you know, if you, you know, so you can kind of maximize your time. So um, does your two hour window take into account other fast passes or no, reservations? No, that it doesn't. Um, because I had a friend of mine from work who was actually just down there last week because that was my concern because we're actually going to be down there, um, in nine days, not that I'm counting or anything. Um, and we have fast passes for other rides. Right. We also have a dining reservation. We also have a reservation to make lightsabers. So the question then becomes, okay, we're, you know, we, we have our boarding time. Are we going to, you know, lose out on other things because we have to get on the ride right. now hoping like the lightsabers, I don't think it's going to take us two hours to to make lightsabers. But I don't know. I, I don't know what what all of this entails. So it'll be interesting to see. Now, when you get your time, you don't get to pick. It's basically, you know. So, so but if I get my, my boarding pass reservation, mm -hmm. am I guaranteed to get on the ride? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Once, you, once you get your boarding pass, you will be getting on the ride. Now, the other thing, too, is that obviously... They're only doing, you know, they can only get so many people on the ride per day. Right. That's just a given. They can't, you know. Um, so a couple of things that they're doing is that, one, 
unofficially the park is opening up at 6 a.m. from now until the first week of January, uh, I think a couple of days after New Year's to help with all of these, you know, people, you know, going to the park. Right. The other thing is that even though the park doesn't open until nine, I've seen various reports that by like eight thirty, nine o'clock, all of the boarding passes have been given out already. Wow. So if you're not there at rope drop or even, you know, park opening, you're probably not, you know, going to get on the ride. The other thing, too, is that everybody from your party has to be there. So it's not like, OK, you know, dad is sleeping with the kids. Mom's going to run to the park to make the reservations. No, because it's going to go based off of your magic band or your pass. So even if you're in the resort at the resort already. So, like with fast passes, we can book fast passes right months in advance, right? Because so we're going to be a resort guest. You physically, have, you have to, to have physically your whole party in, in the, the park, park. Wow. right? Which is, in a way, is kind of nice because I'm sure there are tons of people who make fast pass reservations, and then something happens, and you know, sure, and sure. they don't cancel them. They just kind of, oh, well, we'll just but let it. You be. can, like for instance, in our case here, the three of us can get into the park. Right. Then you can just take the 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 bands, the the fast the right magic bands, and go back and get it. You don't have, to have everyone stand right, in line because to get the thing. at least your magic band will have shown you're physically in the park. You might not be physically wearing it, so, but you're physically in the park. So then, when you get these reservations, how do you get the reservation? Do you have to run to a kiosk or something? I think you're. Su- I, I don't know because there were different things that said you had to actually be in Galaxy's Edge to do it. Others had said you just had to be in the park, go on the app in the park, click that you want your boarding pass. So, again, it's one of those. It's really kind of new, so I'm not 100% sure, but obviously before okay. <laughs> before we so go the down boarding there. Pa- so there, it's possible that the boarding passes can be done through the app once right. your, your magic band has notified right so you can't do it while you're standing outside of the park obviously you have to do it once you're physically in the gate your bands you know that you you've gotten in and that your tickets you know your tickets been punched then you can do it so again have to do a little bit more reading so that we're familiar with it because we're only going to be in hollywood studios the one day um, well, I like the concept of it. It's I like, definitely a good concept. I like the fact that Disney <clears throat> recognizes the mm-hmm. issues that they have, mm-hmm. and they're trying to find new and innovative ways to well, work around it. And, and the other thing, too, think about it. If you're stuck in line for 11 hours, you're not buying food. Right. You're not buying snacks well, or drinks. Well, you have to buy food at some point. Right. So you're sending but, someone to buy right, food. Right, you're sending somebody. Well, remember they were having the the one where, you know, it was like if you got offline to, to go to the bathroom, you had to basically wait to come back. Right. You know, right. because the, the lines were going to be so long. Now, if you're, you know, waiting, okay, if we have to wait a half hour before getting on the ride, that's pretty good for a brand new... Yeah you know, ride and and everything. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. My expectations are we're going to get there and not get on any of the rides. Mm. Um, And I'm not really upset about that. Right. Because I'm pretty sure I can just immerse myself in the ambiance of Galaxy's Edge for the duration of the time that I'm there. And again, seeing all the pictures from various friends that have been there, You know, I think it's one of those things that once you're physically there and seeing it with your own eyes, it's going to be, you know, a hundred times better and 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 whatnot. I'm not, I'm not, and I'll say this now, and and you can quote me on it later. Okay. I'm not going to get upset if we don't get on the ride. Okay. So. Okay. Just being there. I mean, let's face it. We're going on Christmas Eve. Oh, I know. And, so, and, and, and you know, if our viewers didn't already know this, we actually, for the longest time, we weren't doing any parks. We, right. you know, it was like we, we knew we were going to, you know, go to Florida for this time of year. It was a last minute decision. 
I personally was totally okay not doing any park at all. And then we watched the special on Galaxies, and you're like, yeah, how can I, had, I, had how go. can I not go? And I'm like, all right. But the thing is, okay, if we don't get any on any rides, we have our fast passes, so you know we're getting on something. Right. We have a dining reservation. We're gonna eat. You know, we're we've got our lightsabers. We we're definitely getting our lightsabers. So. Everything else is kind of right. like, and that's why like, the icing on the cake. It, this certainly isn't going to be the last time we go to Disney. It's probably not even going to be the last time we go this year. Well, no, we're we're at the end of the year. No, no, uh, we'll probably go again before then. Knowing us, <laughs> no, we won't have any time. <laughs> we'll drive up from Vera Beach and do another oh. day in the park. <laughs> well, <laughs> we do have to drive north to come home, right? Yeah, right. We do have to kind of pass it on the way. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, more than likely, we're we're not going to get back there. This yeah, is kind of this, this is kind of our preview of it. You know, to right. see exactly. exactly. You know, a really expensive preview, but you know, it's Christmas. It's you know, right. It's the Christmas miracle. Right. So again, obviously. You know, we're not going to be doing a podcast until, you know, after the holidays and everything. But obviously, we'll we'll have more to report. We'll probably do a, you know, you know a podcast just on you, a recap. It's probably a good thing we're not doing a podcast <laughs> until after the first of the year because then we can talk about the movie, too. Right, because we'll have the movie to talk about. It's going to be really hard not to talk about the movie if we did podcasts right after. Right, right. So we'll, we'll obviously, we'll give you our reactions to the movie <laughs> and our reactions to, to Galaxy's Edge. That'll probably just be our little Star Wars recap, exactly. you know, Happy New Year uh, thing. It'll be a special so, Star Wars of. Uh, uh, yeah. Podcast. So again, my friends that have already been on the ride said it was amazing. The best, you know, j and, and again, the whole fact that the whole ride itself is almost a half hour. It's Which the longest, mind, you know, three different acts. To the there's ride. three different acts to it. And, you know, and it, it, it should be awesome. I mean, it should everything be awesome. I've so, seen, you know, when it's worked, because they've had some. Right. They've had issues. some mechanical issues. And when stuff, it's worked, so. it's been phenomenal. Yeah. So, so fingers hopefully. crossed. Now, the other thing, too, is, you know, since you, you have to for the app on a smartphone, if you don't have a smartphone, you have to go to guest relations and they're supposedly doing something and you never for people. <laughs> so, you know, or just, you know, spring for a, a smartphone, even get a, a cheap get a burner phone, get a burner phone just there for you your go. Disney trip, you know. But anyway, so again, should be interesting to see how how that goes. So. So tell us about Bob Iger. Try to make me not hate Bob Iger with this one. So just when you thought that the whole Martin Scorsese and Marvel debate was quieting down after months of seemingly everyone in Halloween, uh, Halloween uh, Hollywood, you know, weighing in on it. Now, Disney chairman and chief executive officer and your best friend, Bob Iger, the Disney boss has re was recently named Time's businessman of the year and told the magazine that his team and Scorsese's team are arranging a meeting between the two to discuss the topics presented by Scorsese. So obviously back in October, that's when everything kind of came to light where, you know, he basically said, you know, he referred to Marvel movies as theme parks. Um, he said, the closest I can think of them um, as well made as they are, the actors doing the best that they can under the circumstances, is it's a theme park. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to other human beings. He obviously didn't see Endgame. Just saying. Uh he makes <laughs> mafia movies. What kind of emotions... Are you conveying in mafia movies that you make over and over again? Yeah. So then he obviously, you know, expanded on this later in an op-ed piece um, and basically, you know, said that they were, you know, overpowering with exhibition, leaving no room, you know, for any other cinema, blah, blah, blah. Um, so then in his interview with Time magazine, Iger called Scorsese's comments kind of nasty and not fair to the people who make who are making the movies. Um, so, you know, basically, you know, one of the, the films that that you know, Bob Iger has obviously been very proud of was actually Black Panther and that, you know, 
that that's kind of what he considers, you know, talking about not taking, you know, like that he took a risk and that it's one of his, you know, crowning achievements, you know, with various movies that he's, um, you know, helped to kind of bring, you know, to, to light. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens. Um, you know, obviously there were various people that were in support of, you know, Marvel. There were people that were, you know, in support of Scorsese and, you know, people that were kind of both like, okay, everybody's allowed to, to have, uh, their opinion, but of course, with award season, you know, being around, and as we've, you know, mentioned, um, currently, you know, the Irishman is, you know, dominating uh, various, you know, honors of being nominated, and it won the, you know, the best film for the National Board of Review, and it's up for Golden Globes, and you know, all this other stuff, you know, but also Marvel's Oscar contender is also Endgame, which. You know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how many, you know, come up for that. Because usually the Golden Globes, you know, are the more, I don't want to say artsier films. Um, not always the... Because, you know, mafia's <laughs> <out>. <laughs> no. <clears throat> But anyway, so so it'll be, you know, obviously it's, so, it's not going to die. You know, I don't typically <clears throat> have New Year's resolutions, okay? <laughs> My Can't New wait. Year's resolution this year, which I never have, is that we don't talk about this damn movie or Morton Scorsese in the next year at all. Because, frankly, I'm tired of the story. I'm tired of him. <laughs> I'm tired of him desperately trying to grab headlines. It's, to me, this is yesterday's news. Okay. And then we can move on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, I think that's it for Disney Detective. That's it. All right. Let's move on to entertainment news. So we have uh, a story about Olivia Newton-John and her grease jacket. Now, I saw this in the news, I, and I didn't actually go in and take a look at it mm -hmm. until you had posted the show notes here. And this was kind of cute. This was this was a very sweet story. Um, actually, the, sh she and um, John Travolta actually were also in another new story because it seems that I don't remember where it was, but they were doing a Grease sing along, and the two actors who haven't you know uh, seen each other in a while actually. Um, came to the sing-along dressed as their characters. Um, so Olivia Newton-John was in the, the yellow skirt and jacket, and Travolta was in the leather T-Birds jacket and stuff. So it was really kind of too cute to see them. But what ended up happening was last month, Olivia Newton-John um, had an auction where she was auctioning off more than 500 items of personal memorabilia to benefit her foundation, the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Wellness and Research Center um, in her hometown of Melbourne. Um, so the jacket, which went for $243,200, was worn by Newton-John in the closing scene of the 1978 classic movie. Um, the singer had it on just moments before she and John Travolta broke into the song, You're the One That I Want. So a month after the auction, the buyer had the jacket wrapped up in a pink gift box and surprised her, um, according to the footage of the meet and greet, which was recorded on December 8th and posted it earlier this week on um, the Facebook page of the auction house okay. that, that ran the auction. Um, and she said, are you serious? Said the stunned Newton John, her hands in her face, you know, giving the man a huge hug. Uh, she says, that's the sweetest thing. Um, the man who didn't want to be identified, um, he had his face blurred in uh, the video, basically said, this jacket belongs to to you and the collection the collective soul of those who love you uh those who, uh for those whom sorry those for whom you are the soundtrack of their lives it should not just sit in a billionaire's closet for country club bragging rights the anonymous buyer said for that reason i'm humbly and respect respectfully returning it to its rightful owner which is you um 
The man uh, identified himself as a Southern California doctor and wished Newton John the best for, in her third battle with breast cancer. Uh, he said, Godspeed for a quick recovery. Should you ever need medical advice or support from a trusted doctor in L.A., I'll be here for you. Nice. Um, the singer is obviously best known for 1970 hits like uh, Let Me Be There, If You Love Me, obviously physical from the, the 80s. Um, and, you know, she honestly loved the gift. Um, you're the best. You are the best. And I'm so grateful. This is the most beautiful present, but mainly it's your heart that I'm grateful for. That's nice. So that was that was just really sweet, you know. That is. It's, it's nice to see that you still have... Even not even on a fan level, mm -hmm. but just on a decent human being. Yeah, level, yeah. Know, especially this time of year to see this type of thing come right. Out. And it's nice. you know, and and it probably had nothing to do with the jacket. You know, she she raised two point four million dollars for her her foundation. Yeah. You know, so that was great. And you know, so here it was more here. I'm making the donation. I don't need the jacket. Right. Exactly. You can have the jacket, you know, so exactly. that, that, well, that was Well, and cool. I like the, I, you know, the down the earth idea of this is yours. It should be yours. Like even if she puts it on display for right, others, right. you know, it should like it could the, the be, guys pointed, it shouldn't sit in some billionaire's private collection. Right. Is, is you know, brilliant. put it in the Smithsonian, you know, on loan yep. from, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, and, and that's the thing is a lot of times, a lot of the movie props never go to, you know, the, the actors who, who use them, they're part of, yeah. you know, the, you know, the production company or, or the studio, and then the studio does, you know, whatever with them. So this was kind of cool that, you know, she had a bunch of stuff and, you know, was, you know, auctioning them off to, to raise money and that, you know, it managed to, to find its way back. I think that's great. So very cool. <clears throat> Tell us about the expanse. So not really a whole lot to talk about, but what was kind of cool was that a couple of hours before it was supposed to drop, it actually showed up uh, available. So fans, you know, got to watch it a couple of hours before the official launch time. Uh, so it was a, a, a little, you know, a bit of a early Christmas present, I guess, as you could say. Um, you know, so then, you know, there were a couple of people that were like, oh, damn, there goes my weekend, <laughs> you know, because now I've got to sit and, and watch everything. Um, so the the article, uh, the person that wrote it said, in our review of the first six episodes, we call it very much the same show. And it feels like it's the beginning of a grand second act. So it may start a little slow, though you'll pick up right where you left off after the third season uh, finale. Um, and obviously, Amazon has already renewed it for a fifth season so which we already knew right so no no worries obviously when that'll be but you know who knows but you know obviously it was last may that amazon came in and said hey we're gonna make more of these you know when you know it was kind of up in the air you know because sci-fi had dropped it didn't know where it was going you know so i still don't know how they drop it it was literally the 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 uh, highest rated show on their network. Right. And the only reason I could think is it's really expensive. And to maybe produce. that's that's what it is. And it'll be interesting to see the difference because I think we've talked about this too. And even when we went to to Comic Con earlier this year and, and we listened met to the panel, and we yeah. listened to the panel and they said it's going to be a little bit of a different show because now we're on a streaming now service. They can curse. You know, we can curse, there can be nudity, there can be, you know, all these things that we couldn't do from a network standpoint. Well, what I liked so, was they didn't have the time constraint. So exactly, that was going to be my other thing. If it needs to be an hour and 15, it can be an hour right. and 15. Right, it doesn't to, have to, to fit the into that 42-minute yeah. because of commercials and whatever. It can be a full hour and 10 seconds if it needs to right. be. So, again, very excited. We haven't had a chance yet with things that go on so i'm sure maybe tonight we'll probably yep. dive in so you know definitely looking Very forward cool. to been, it been so waiting for this one so. Mm -hmm. so that is all we had for entertainment news mm -hmm. we'll come back with our insightful picks of the week mm -hmm. holiday themed right yeah actually okay. they are all right Go with your insightful pick. So this is an insightful pick that I 
did before, but when I did it before, it was for the Halloween season. Now, this time, it's Ooh, for the Christmas Double season. Dipping. Double dipping. So, it's one of our favorite locations to, to hit during the holidays, and it is Shady Brook Farms, which is in Yardley, Pennsylvania. So, any of you that are kind of local to the area, um, this is a, a great place to go. This is actually their 25th annual uh, light show, holiday light show. This is their 25th year. Um, it's open nightly. It actually opened right before Thanksgiving. So it was uh, November 23rd and actually goes until January 5th. So even after the holidays, if you're looking for something to do before. Which we've done. We've done it Yeah, after we've actually the done it after the holiday, you know, too. Um, which it still, you know, still works out. The only thing that's a little different is Santa's not there. Oh, and they're not selling Christmas trees. Um, so basically you get to experience the magic. You can't get it for a really good discount? I don't know. Uh. You might. <laughs> <laughs> Five bucks. Well, you um, know, the Russians don't celebrate Christmas until that's January true. 5th. Yeah, so. that is true. So you get to experience the magic of more than three million lights illuminating acres of farmland in the Shady Brook Farms. Uh, holiday light show, uh, whimsical displays, some featuring familiar characters as you drive through in the comfort of your own car, which is very nice because there's another uh, farm in our area that do- that has a light sh- display, but you have to go in their wagon. So if it's really cold, you have to really bundle up. But the other thing, too, is um, for Shady Brook, you can do it in your own car or they also do have open air wagon rides, weather permitting as well. Um, it's a two mile trail that takes about 20 minutes to drive through. You basically driving, you know, at your at your own pace, but obviously you have cars, you know, in front of you and, and back of you. So everybody kind of, you know, takes their time. Um you know, enjoying the sights. Um, then what's nice is that afterwards they have a whole bunch of areas set up with bonfires. Um, they sell hot chocolate. They sell um, s'mores. S'mores kits. Um, so they have the fires and then you can buy the s'mores kit. So they sell like a little tiny one and then you can actually buy a big giant bag of marshmallows and you get a stick and everybody's sitting there playing with fire. Um, what, what was that? What could possibly go <laughs> what wrong? What could possibly go wrong? What was actually really cool was when we went a couple of weeks ago, we weren't going to get marshmallows because we were like, ah, eh, we're going to be going home and having dinner. And there was a very nice older woman sitting across from us with her grandchild and she had gotten the big giant bag and knew they weren't going to eat them all and there's Maddie you know sitting there just you know she wasn't looking pitiful she wasn't you know and was like oh do you want to you want to roast some marshmallows here here's an extra stick here you know yeah, and she ended up nice and ended up giving us the rest of her bag so and then you know we ended up yay See, bag of marshmallows. spirit of christmas spirit of christmas um they have music playing um there's a little playground area for the kids to run around then they have obviously their store um that you can go into they also have a um, a little bar area too. Now they're starting to sell. Um, st- I don't know what brand of wine it is, but obviously something local. Um, and then they have like a little Christmas shop where you can actually go and see Santa and get your picture taken um, with him. So the cost is thirty dollars per carload, fifty dollars if you have a mini bus, limo, or an RV, and one hundred and twenty-five for an actual bus to go go through uh, i've never seen a bus go i've never through. seen a bus go through but then i don't know that i'm some, sure they, it, it's a some pretty tight turns to have to navigate yeah the bus. yeah um they do run their own uh of course i've never seen a limo go through either, right but. uh radio station so you can turn your your car radio to a, a certain station to listen to christmas yeah. music the one year we actually were playing our own soundtrack so we were playing a mix of hanukkah and christmas right, music since right. we're an interfaith uh, family. Um, so again, they're open daily from the 20, they, you know, obviously until the 5th of January, uh, Sunday through Thursday, it's from five to 10 PM 
Fridays and Saturday from 5 to 11. Uh, the wagon rides are $15 per person, and those uh, only go until 8 p.m. during the week and 9 p.m. on the weekend, obviously weather permitting. Um, now, they are open during Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day, but the market and the fire pits are actually closed on those days. So if you go... No fire on Christmas. <clears throat> no fire on Christmas. So obviously you can... And no wagon rides either. So basically, you can just drive through if you're doing Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, or New Year's Day. Right. But any other time, the shop is open, um, the fire pits and, and whatnot are, are available as well. So cool. yeah, it's a fun time for the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good pick. Thank you. So I am not surprisingly... <laughs> going to go with the documentary actually <gasps> so this one was actually one i had they had a, a, a previous documentary that wasn't christmas themed that i had watched mm -hmm. a couple of years back that i enjoyed and i came across this one it's called proper english christmas it's a 2013 documentary that's streaming on amazon prime proper english christmas is a reality television style documentary following three people as they work a classic English estate in the style of Victorian England, preparing to celebrate the, a traditional Victorian Christmas. Working on a 1,200-acre English estate with only the tools and resources that would have been available to tenant farmers in the 1800s, your hosts Alex, Peter, and Ruth give a detailed account of just how labor-intensive even the most simple things that we take for granted today are. Uh, Labor-intensive activities like making soap, churning butter, uh, grinding wheat to make bread, and even the difficulties in harvesting hay to feed the farm animals over the long winter are demonstrated in incredible detail. Faced with the need to restore a blacksmith's forge, the hosts have to mold thousands of bricks from clay they process themselves, then spend five long and cold nights tending a kiln to fire them in order to prepare these everyday implements of construction for proper use. We learned various recipes for things like traditional English uh, uh, meals like mincemeat and sweet treats. Uh, we even see uh, recipes for homemade remedies for colds and other ailments uh, that hardworking farmers of the day would face. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, even gift giving proves to be complicated and labor intensive as our hosts must make their own wrapping paper and dye their own ribbon to properly present their handmade gifts to each of the, uh, each other and to the Lord and the tenant of the, the Lord of the estate. Uh, the months of work and toil culminate in a Dickensian style Christmas complete with Christmas pudding, Christmas pie, and all accompanied by singing of traditional Christmas carols. Uh, after seeing all of the effort required to put together what today would be a relatively simple event, it gives me a whole new appreciation for the luxuries that we enjoy today and makes me thankful for the relative prosperity we enjoy and the technology that makes it all possible. <clears throat> Proper English Christmas is a fantastic holiday themed educational experience and it's available for streaming now on Amazon Prime. Very cool. Um I think that is what we have for the show today. Mm -hmm. Uh let's run down our contact information real quick. Sure. Uh you can reach out to us via email at comments at insights into things dot com. On Twitter at insights underscore things. On YouTube, you can catch our videos at youtube.com slash insights into things. On the web at www.insightsintothings.com. And the audio version of our podcast at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. So just to reiterate a couple of the programming notes we mentioned earlier. This is our last podcast before the holiday break, so we're going to take a couple of weeks off. We will be traveling for a portion of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably going to have some replays going on our Twitch channel. Mm -hmm. um, 
just to keep things going. Uh, we'll be back after the new year and we will be trying to adhere to our new show time today. We couldn't because we had a Christmas concert a for our concert. daughter we had to mm -hmm. go to. So we will be recording live Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time when mm -hmm. we return into the new year. Um, and I think that's it. We have a little gift to give to you folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, wish you all happy holidays and a safe and happy new year. Absolutely. The Night Before Christmas by Clement C. Moore Introduction In 1822, a New York clergyman named Clement Clark Moore spun together Christmas memories for his children. The poem he wrote featured a red-suited Santa and a reindeer-drawn sleigh, a never-empty sack of toys, and stockings hung expectantly above the fireplace. He called it A Visit from St. Nicholas, and it was then published anonymously in a newspaper in Troy, New York. It captured the public's imagination. The poem's opening line, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas," soon replaced the original title. One reason Moore's poem has endured is that it is a joy to read aloud. Beginning in hushed suspense, the poem builds to a traumatic crescendo as the rollicking verses usher the mysterious midnight visitor. A tale of anticipation and wonder. The night before Christmas has become a holiday tradition in itself for many families. So as you listen to this recounting of the poem, whether for the first Christmas or to recall those past, Celebrate and share the timeless joys of this enchanting holiday. T'was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the courses they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas, too. And then in a twinkle, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each tiny hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, 
and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump and a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him, in spite of myself. In a wink of his eye and a twist of his head, soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Ho, ho, ho.